Hello and welcome to the Pembrokeshire Bird Diary for 2022. I'm Annie Haycock from the Pembrokeshire Bird Group. Unfortunately, I've got so far behind in producing these diaries that I'm just giving the highlights for the period from July to September in the hope of getting up to date one day. After a cool and unsettled start, July turned into a warmer than average month, but with only a third of the expected rainfall. This is the fifth month in a row with below average rainfall, so it's no wonder that Lisa Fram Reservoir is looking a bit parched. For some of us, the month started with the BTO Youth Camp at Stackpole. It was hard work, but everyone seemed to enjoy it, and hopefully the young people, only one of whom was from Pembrokeshire, were encouraged to make more of their bird watching. Nobody could have predicted the bonus bird, an alpine swift that flew over our heads at the Stack Rocks car park. Seabirds generally live for 20 to 40 years or even more, and with that longevity, they have a long, slow life cycle, rearing only one chick per year. The most extreme are the tube noses, the relatives of the albatrosses. On Skokom, fulmer eggs are only just hatching, as are the storm petrels. But the good news is that one of the boxes in the petrol station now has its fourth chick in four years. The experiment is obviously a success. While the shearwaters won't reach this stage until late August, I mention them here because they've been censored by, on Ramsey Island. The census comes around every five years. This year's population is over 6,000 pairs, up from only about 500 pairs there when the rats were eradicated in the year 2000, and up 30% on the last count in 2017. For the most part, this is a period of migration. Amongst the waders dropping into the GAN are these breeding plumage black-tailed godwits, probably failed or non-breeders, there are no juveniles amongst them. Mediterranean gulls, however, are bringing their families along. Scarcer species are also dropping in. On the 19th, there was a pectoral sandpiper at the Nevin. Then there were six gargany at the GAN on the 14th. That's quite a flock for this part of the world, as the last time six were reported together was in March 1959. Numbers and species at the GAN change daily as birds drop in for short periods before continuing their journey. This little egret stayed around for at least five days and seems to be wading around in rather large wellies. It was ringed at Lanon in Ceredigion back in April by Tony Cross while he was out trying to catch Wimbrel at night. And was the Cory Shearwater seen at Strombel on the 25th, the same bird as the Cory Shearwater seen at Skokom the same morning? Hundreds have been seen off southwest Cornwall and Ireland the previous day, so maybe not. And this is a reminder that you don't have to have a camera, you can still record rarities the old fashioned way. These notes were taken for submission to the Welsh Birds Rarities Committee. The photo wasn't taken in Britain, but shows some of the features mentioned in the notes. You can do some interesting bird watching without going to out of the way places, for example in supermarket car parks. This black headed gull was ringed near Warsaw in 2019 and has since visited Carmarthenshire, Cornwall and Somerset before arriving at Tesco in Haverford West. Another well-travelled gull is this lesser blackback seen on Skokom at the end of the month. It was ringed on Flatholm in 2006, seen in Gloucester that year and in 2010, in Portugal in 2010 and 2011, and then nothing until now. August temperatures were three degrees above average in the southern half of Wales. It was the eighth driest August since 1836 and the fourth sunniest. A number of fires broke out across the county, the most notable being those at Newgale and then at St David's on the 13th. A team of biodiversity surveyors working on fields adjacent to this fire quickly fled the scene. On the 19th, a hosepipe ban came into force. The good weather meant that migrants generally passed high overhead at night, not needing to stop. However, an occasional cloudy night did ground a few of them, notably on the first when Skokom was dotted with a hundred smart young lemon-yellow willow warblers. 
The next evening, a rosy starling dropped into roost with about 30 ordinary starlings at the Tyvee marshes, but it seems no one was handy by with a suitable camera. And then came the news that we had all been hoping not to hear. Avian flu had been confirmed on the Grasholm Island Gallant Colony. Some area of the colony were more badly affected than others, but only time will tell the true extent of the damage. It seems to be a good year for yellow wagtails, with several reports during the autumn. This juvenile goshawk seemed to think that a human house might be worth exploring. Virtually all the wheat ears breeding on Skokom have been ringed over the last few years, but this one was different. It had been ringed as a breeding bird on Lundy back in May, then came to Skokom to molt. That process now finished, it's ready to head south with the Skokom birds. August the 11th saw the last puffins bringing food to chicks on Skokom, the same date as last year and the same as the average for the last nine. Summer is the season for pelagic trips, going out by boat to the Celtic Deep to find birds that tend to stay far from shore. Wilson storm petrels were reported from a trip on the 19th. These birds breed way down near the Antarctic, so have no reason to come close to land during their wanderings to the north. However, another Wilson's petrel was reported from Strombel, where there was also a black tern and more Balearic shearwaters then another quarry shearwater off Skokom on the 20th. Pochard seems to be making a comeback this year. Two at Marlow's Mere was a nice find on the 18th. Then a scorp on Pembroke Mill Pond on the 22nd, another species that has reduced to one or two sightings a year during this century. August ended with a wryneck on Skokom, the first of the autumn. A fine start to September brought in more willow warblers, at least 227 of them, as well as another Ictorine warbler to Skokom, and also on the first, the first dotterel of the autumn. The West Williamston area of the Clethi estuary has been something of a mecca for ospreys in recent years. There are two in this picture, but three were seen together on one occasion. As none were ringed, we can't say exactly how many were involved or where they came from. And there were sightings on the Tyvee too. Low water levels at Lisa Fran could have been a lot worse if not for the hosepipe ban, but it did allow waders to forage along the water's edge. Five or six common sandpipers, three curlew sandpipers, plus single Dunlin, Ruff and Curlew were all noted. However, 13 Curlew sandpipers together at the GAN was the biggest gathering since 1996. Dale Airfield produced a pectoral sandpiper on the 8th, the third one this year, while a short-toed lark dropped in the following day. Most records have been in the spring when birds are assumed to have overshot their breeding grounds in Spain, but there were autumn records in 1994 and 95, and again in 2014. Sometimes you just have to be in the right place at the right time with the right equipment to get photos like this of a honey buzzard flying in from the sea at Strumble Head. This seems to be the first record since 2017. Not that they've ever been common or regular visitors. And any harrier passing over Skokom is good to see. This one in the 12th didn't initially cause any great excitement, but when the photos were looked at the following day, it turned out to be a juvenile pallid harrier, the first for Skokom and the third for Wales. At the end of the month, this was the first corncrake record on Skokom this century. Corncrakes used to breed here in Pembrokeshire, but now only one or two are seen every few years on passage. Then there was a turtle dove at St Govan's Head. 
there was a mass arrival of red wings on the 25th. It seems that the berry crop in Scandinavia has suffered in the hot conditions and the birds aren't finding a lot of food there. So they are moving south earlier than usual. There is, however, a lot of food at Gupton near Freshwater West. These linnets are making the most of crops sown for birds on the National Trust property there. Richard Ellis counted 571 in the top photo and 1,564 in the bottom one. And then there were a few goldfinches trying to get in on the act. Well, that's a quick catch up with the early migration period. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll look out for the next edition.